here at highlights for quarterfinal one and two for round three of the ESL R1 here at the Nürburgring. Nils Naujok on pole position for the first quarterfinal with Yoni Tormula just in behind. There is also an RHG Audi there, but it's not about the Audi at all as we head down towards turn number one. It's a three-way fight between the BMWs with Jeff Gassi of Furia trying to get up into the lead, but Yoni Tormula deals with all of that pressure beautifully well and holds on to that first position. But it's not done for second spot because Furia versus BS competition. Jeff Giassi versus Nils Naujox furiously down in towards turn number four. Almost a bit of contact as we run then on the exit. You see the Furia car just get across the bonnet of Nils Naujox and hold on to that P2. Oh, they used to be teammates, but now they're arch enemies. It's Tommy Ostgaard versus Dane Warren as they exit turn four down towards turn number five. They're touching as they get towards the braking zone. And there's a little bit of argy bargy coming down in towards turn number six. And as you can see, like I said, no love lost because Dane Warren sends Tommy Ostgaard a little bit wide. Bonner House in the Mercedes just in behind trying to pick up any potential crumbs left behind. As we head then down towards the hairpin, you can see that Tommy Ostgaard goes very deep under braking and has to filter in but that was for seventh position now this is for the final qualifying spot you can see dane warren up towards that final chicane on lap number five gets it all wrong gets a little bit of braking on the grass cannot get the move done on enzo benito benito and the bmw drives away but now look at this warren left open tommy ostgaard says thank you very much i will get involved here around the final corner he will go and as they now drag race down towards turn number one you think it might be over it absolutely is not we head on to lap number six they're still side by side Bono House praying that there's some contact here between the two of them and potentially could pick up some positions and maybe even that top six. But as they come then through turn number one, Ostgard does have his nose ahead. Dane Warren still wanting to fight. This is brilliant in the rear view mirror for Enzo Benito. He's thinking, you guys crack on and fight. Let me drive away and get this P6. And you think, is it going to be done through turn number four? Well, Ostgard's going to send it. And by the time they get on the exit, he finally gets across the bonnet and takes P7. One driver who did not see any of that in his rearview mirror is Yoni Tormula. Picks up the victory for quarterfinal number one, and it was very comprehensive indeed. Joining him through to the semifinals is Jeff Giassi, Nils Naujok, Marcel Shinjik, Jacob Brzezinski, and Enzo Benito. Tommy Ostgaard, Bono House, Patrick Holtzman, Lucas Muller, Peter Berryman, and Dane Warren will all have to wait for round four to get some of those big points. Now it's time for quarterfinal number two, and it was Erhan Yajowski who was on pole position, and Ryan Barneveld was in second. Dara McCormack in that Mercedes is in third, but the big send, it was Eamon Murphy for G2 Esports, moves from sixth up into fourth position. It was beautifully done. It was maybe a little bit aggressive, but there was no contact in Indeed, but it's all about Oliveira now. Oliveira has a battle throughout the entirety of this race, trying to hold on to a top six position. As you can see there, he's in behind Mikel Gala. We're on board right now in lap number three. Sends one down the inside of Eamon Murphy, trying to hold on to a P4. Murphy's like, absolutely not. I've worked too hard to be in this position. I am not giving this up for three. And then all of a sudden, Kevin Ellis Jr., one of the most successful drivers in this championship, makes it three wide down towards turn number three. They all managed to get through okay Oliveira does indeed hold on to that top five Kevin Ennis Jr sent off wide and now all of a sudden Kevin Siggy gets involved Siggy makes a late lunge down in towards the hairpin on lap number three and it's the biggest shock of the day Kevin Siggy makes a mistake all on his own didn't seem like there's any contact the rejoin well that's questionable nearly takes out a car but Kevin Siggy unfortunately is out at this stage of the competition back to the Oliveira show then as he goes back up into P4 Eamon Murphy this time around has to be a bit more aggressive to try and retake that fourth position doesn't really need to do so but ultimately giving us a show to watch indeed love to see it Kevin Ellis Jr. just sat patiently in behind in P6 hoping to pick up some insurance by getting an extra position because he's got Moritz Lohner in behind down towards turn number five the two BMWs creating a roadblock and again Kevin Ellis Jr. just got to be patient Oliveira ran off into the grass still manages though to maintain that top five position and you think this is over ladies and gentlemen it is not this is for the final qualifying spot to go through to the semi-finals Oliveira takes that defensive line down towards the hairpin Kevin Ellis Jr. trying to find a bit of momentum around the outside then has to go defensive on Morris Lona but this is the mistake that cost the Brazilian makes one error as we head on to the back straight 
straight before we get into that final chicane. And this ultimately cost him the position with, Kev uh, with Kevin Ellis Jr. And then Moritz Lona was able to pick up the pieces a little bit later on. But look at this, it's still close here, almost three wide between all three drivers. Ellis Jr. then round the outside, not really left enough room. He then's under pressure all of a sudden from Moritz Lona. You can see then that Mitchell de Jong then comes through as well. You've got Tim Yarshall for FaZe trying to get involved in this party. And again, you think it's over. It absolutely is not over. These drivers were racing like this from start to finish. It was absolutely sensational. And again, Jajowski, who won the race, has no idea that was happening behind him. But Jajowski did take the checkered flag and did take quarterfinal number two. Joining him through to our semi-final one is Dara McCormack, Ryan Barneveld, Eamon Murphy, Moritz Lona, and Kevin Ellis Jr. Because Oliveira had a penalty in the end of a slowdown. Mitchell De Jong finishes in seventh, Oliveira in eighth, Kevin Siggy ninth, James Baldwin in 10th, Tim Yasha in 11th, and then Mikko Gala is in 12th spot. Here are the quarterfinal three and four highlights for the ESL R1 round three at the Nürburgring, and it is pole position for Luke Bennett, the young pretender versus the old calf in Josh Rogers, but it was not about them as we head down towards turn number one because Victor Veloso for Furia starting 10th makes an almighty send, makes it four wide, bit of argy-bargy for sure, but gets up into a top six position with maybe, just maybe, move of the day. Also, Graham Carroll managing to go from sixth up to fourth position, managing to get ahead there of the Mouse and G2 Esports car who had a hell of a ding-dong. Uh, there was a little bit of oversteer for Isaac Price out of turn number one, which actually sent uh, the Mouse car, Max Benica, a little bit wide up towards turn number two, but the return of the favor happened. Max Benneker moves up into a P5, and then Isaac Price, who did not have the best of races, unfortunately, for him, uh, then did indeed lose out down into P6. A bit further on, then lap number three is Victor Veloso, who was involved pretty much from start to finish, now under pressure from Jamie Fluke as we go a little bit further ahead here. And now we see a slowdown penalty, which checks the whole field up. So Isaac Price does receive a penalty. Uh, and ultimately then that meant the Furia car went up into the back of him. The apex car of Jamie Fluke then closes up. But all of a sudden, Reina Talva is like, well, thank you very much. I'm getting involved here as well. And it's a three-way battle for that final qualifying position as well. Jamie Fluke gives a lovely nudge there to Reina Talva. Reina Talva will not be thinking it was lovely at all. As we head then on to lap number five, it's still a battle for that final qualifying position just up the road. But these two costing each other an opportunity of getting involved with Victor Veloso because they are just battling so profusely. But look who else is in behind him. Isaac Price, even though he had a slowdown, is now back to try and gain a couple of spots. We've then got Big Run as well for Heroic trying to get involved. But we head on to lap number six and we see something so rare in sim racing. A mistake from Josh Rogers. It didn't cost him anything, but we saw him almost go full sideways. Good recovery on board, though, here with Yuri Toman. He had the best seat in the house but as we head up towards the end of this race you could cover the front three with a loincloth they were that close didn't really battle it out in the end but luke bennett 17 years old ladies and gentlemen picks up a victory for team redline joining him through to our semi-finals will be joshua rogers yuri toman will finish in third graham carroll maximin benica and victor veloso will indeed all go through to the semis unfortunately we lose reina talva jamie fluke oscar bixward dennis shuniger isaac price and ian porter In quarterfinal number four, it was Yuri Kasdorp who had a terrible rounds one and two, who started a pole position, and it was another Furia driver, but this time on the front row, it's Felipe Baptista. In third was Team Red Lions' Jeffrey Rietveld. And while the big story here is Robbie Stableford, before the race had even begun, he jumped the start, and unfortunately with drive through in a 15 minute race format, your race is over. So Robbie Stableford with a DNF. Uh, such a shame, you know, all that practice to unfortunately make one mistake. We head then on board with Marco Pejic, who was in the fifth position, but look at that slide. That slide cost Pejic two spots. The field and Ez comes through, says thank you very much. And Nikodem Wisniewski, who found a gap that just didn't seem to be there, manages to get involved here. They're still side by side on the exit at turn number four. By the time they get down towards turn number five, Wisniewski had indeed got that top six position. And then it was a battle here between Tartala and Johan Haaf. So if you don't get into the top six, it's all about making sure you finish as high as possible because this is the race that you're going to gain points if you're not going through to the semi-finals. We see a little bit of co contact there between Williams and BS Competition. Phil Dinez just about holding onto the car. Marco Pejic 
who for four laps threw everything at Nikodem Wisniewski. Wisniewski did not crack under the pressure. And for the first time, we see that Marco Pérez just about had his nose up in front. Wisniewski was never going to give it up easily, but the invitation was then open to heroic driver Thomas Tartala, who absolutely accepted that invitation, did get involved. And while well, this battle just kept going on and on and on, we're heading up towards the final sector of lap number six. For the first time, though, there was some side-by-side -side action between Pejic and Tartala. And Nikodem Wisniewski, for the first time, had a bit of breathing room as well. He would have been looking in his rearview mirror thinking, oh, this is brilliant. If you two can just keep being side by side, makes my job so, so much more easy. Up towards that final chicane, Marco Pejic was always going to try and outbreak the Porsche. Absolutely did so. Tartala then just loses out in terms of, he just can't get on the power. He's got a Mercedes in front of him. Then he's under pressure from the phase driver. So Ozilderim comes through as well. The two Porsches battling out. Bit of argy bargy as we head then onto lap number seven. And while if that wasn't enough for the two Porsche drivers, Johan Haaf wanted to get involved as well. Johan and half one of the top 10 in the championship not having a good day here in round number three side by side action down towards the hairpin half on the outside in the apex racing team car and then we have indeed got the heroic car of tartar you see the her heroic livery there on the front bonnet of the porsche and they are almost touching there. It's brilliant driving from them all. Again, some frustration from these drivers, that is for certain, but they still drove with great integrity. Felipe Baptista for Furia, picking up the first ever victory for the Brazilian team. Great performance from the BMW driver and a very happy team. Three drivers going through to our semi-finals. Also joining Felipe Baptista is Yuri Kazdorp, Jeffrey Rietveld, we've got Mac Backham, Phil Dinez, Nikodem Wisniewski, and unfortunately, the six drivers that indeed will not be taking part in the semi-finals will be Marco Pejic, Ulas Ozildirim, Johan Haaf, Thomas Tartala, Risto Capit, and Robbie Stapleford.